Greetings and salutations. How's it going, everybody? It's Danthal. It's time for another episode of Virtual Reality in VR. Oh, goodbye, dog. <laughs> virtual Reality in VR is a show about virtual reality in virtual reality. Uh, I shoot this on <laughs> some virtual reality cameras here in my office, pla uh, you know, crafting uh, area. You can see my art on the walls here. If you look every week, I'll add new pieces of art and stuff like that. Anyways, uh, I'm just a, a crazy dude who likes virtual reality and has been uh, playing with his MetaQuest 3 since it came out in October of 2023. Been using it every day now. You can see up here, uh, every single day I use it for 45 minutes to exercise with and play video games with and watch videos with and report back in to you uh, about the things that's going on in the virtual reality world. Yeah, so anyways, my name's Danthal. You can see the dog that walks around here and sometimes bumps the camera and makes it so that we have to record the episode again. Her name is uh, so so let's get into this week. Uh, this week, of course, is the uh, launch of the Apple Vision Pro. Everybody's out there going to the Apple stores, uh, picking theirs up and taking them home and unboxing them and making the videos and doing the first impressions and all of those videos I was predicting of. I wore my VR headset for 24 hours. I did this all day and here's all these things and here's the experienced dinosaurs. <laughs> There's this one dude, he takes his, puts his headset on and he goes into New York Times. Times Square and he goes into the donuts and he has a donut and he picks it up and he's playing and he's just holding like his donut but in VR a, a butterfly comes and lands on his donut <laughs> and here's all these poor people that just see this guy with ski goggles you know holding a donut in the air and, and being weird and uh, you know people the, on the subways and on the streets and all of the other fun things we didn't see this when the MetaQuest 3 came out, there, there weren't people uh, just, you know, walking into Starbucks wearing their headsets and stuff. But, you know, Apple people are Apple people. You have to expect them to uh, uh, want to go and try out their new tech and do things they're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to drive your Tesla uh, in self-drive mode and wear your VR headset. You're not supposed to ride a, a one wheel and do all of that it's uh fun uh of course my favorite videos are the ones where they're doing the teardowns and you have the nice teardowns where they're taking it apart and going here's the parts here's the sensor array this helps it and they give all the the, the background and tech uh there's the ones where they just grab a knife and cut it oh this front screen is plastic oh you can just cut this with a box knife and just destroying it piece by piece and not being the least bit kind and then there's other guys you know i'm going to drop it from three feet now i'm going to drop it from five feet now i'm going to drop it from 10 feet on the floor oh look it broke <laughs> it's great um but i'm loving the videos uh, of all people also going and setting this up in their house or their office and you know they walk down the hallway and this office door and it has their name uh you know who's in that office and what what you know notes that you have and then here's the break room where you can see these things or people set it up in their house and they're, they can sit on their couch and watch their TV or if they go to their desk, there's a displays there. If they go in the kitchen, there's, there's a display over the fridge or in the bathroom. It's interesting to see how people are using the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, you even see people that are trying their best to have good gaming experiences on here. I think I said last episode that like Synth Riders and Beat Saber wouldn't be on here, so why would I want it? It ends up Synth Riders did make a version of their game for the Apple Vision Pro. It's got really slick uh, pass-through graphics while you're doing the things, and instead of controllers, you just hold your hands. Uh, but because you're using your hands and not controllers, that are tracked they can only have like a uh, beginner and uh, normal and, and difficult levels uh, that are on there they don't have the master or the expert levels because the hand tracking just won't track far enough if you watch some of the videos you can see the balls that are supposed to be superimposed over your hands are kind of tracking to the distance when you're moving quickly so hopefully uh they'll improve the tracking on that uh make it to where you have better more responsive kind of things um, i just don't think synth riders would be good without controllers because the haptics of it that's like an important thing when you're playing synth riders is when you have if you've seen synth riders there's balls and there's rails and you have to have your hands over the rails and you can feel it when you're doing it because the the sensation of the haptics the 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 vibration makes you know if you're on the rail good or bad so i don't know how well gaming like that is going to work in the uh, in the apple vision pro <laughs> sphere. 
uh, I, for some reason I got Apple Vision Pro boots with the fur, you know, the, like the song, because it's Apple, whatever. <laughs> And that, now when I say Apple Vision Pro, I always think boots with a fur after. I got some fun memes here from, <laughs> from the internet. They're not memes. They're AI-generated images that don't look right. I like this one the most. It's my favorite. The VR is not in the place that it's supposed to be. But if you're in the club, maybe. Maybe that would be a good uh, place for a VR <laughs> headset. <laughs> but, yeah. When Apple Vision Pro came out, instead of going to the uh, Apple Vision store and getting a demo, I downloaded Underdogs for the MetaQuest 2 and 3. I believe it's out on the PC as well. I'd have to double check. Uh, this is out from a company called One Hamza. They are in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. So far as I can tell, there's just two developers. Uh, they made the game Racket NX, which is also on the MetaQuest. And Racket MX is kind of like a uh, tennis or racquetball, but you're kind of doing a breakout with it. It's a popular game. Um, and so this is their follow-up to it. And it makes a lot of sense because this kind of has a lot of motion and kinetic kind of stuff going on with it too. Um, I'll just read like some of the description from the meta site because it's it breaks it down better than I can <laughs> do it. You know, wrap yourself in five tons of metal and go smashing through a dark scene of underground mech fights. Bash, crush, maul, and rip apart enemy bots and mechs. It's full-on metal-on-metal violence, and it's first-of-the-kind physics-based mech brawler. But rampaging through the pits ain't all. This is a roguelike. Gear up with 100-plus items and power tools. Hire hackers and saboteurs. Hustle and deal with the gangster psychos who run these streets as you claw your way up the food chain. The city is a dog-eat-dog beep show <laughs> but luckily you ain't alone you and your little bruv king is in your corner hacking enemies and giving you lip while you fight like a wild animal smashing car sized pit bots that want you dead to the deafening roars of bloodthirsty crowds this is new Braca, the mech fighting capital of the world this is underdogs and then you know there's the underdogs theme up uh, going it's great it's got really great music it's got really great voice acting and dialogue it is a roguelike so you play the game the first time and you're going to die but you'll see the story progress uh, you'll get some new things as you go but basically as they said uh, you are a uh, in a five-ton mech gorilla suit. At the end of your hands, uh, you have just balls that kind of grip. When you grip the ground, it, the, it holds the ground. So if you move forward, it moves you, you know, forward and back. And so <laughs> you just kind of get used to just doing the whole locomotion thing with moving forward or doing back or doing to the, the side, or you can do one hand. And uh, what's great is it's a physics-based fighter. So instead of, uh, you know, some games where you might have a sword and you just waggle the sword and chop and do that, you know, things that basically wouldn't really work in a sword fight just kind of goes, you can't do that with this. You'll just do it and the, the things will grab your arm and try and pull it off. It's physics-based, so you got to get in there, punch, get out of there. So a lot of it's you, you push yourself backwards and then you pull your, and then you, you have to swing and you have to swing your arms and really do the motions. It's all physics based. The motions you do with your hands and move yourself or you swing or you punch or you grab, it feels really good. And it kind of establishes that you're standing in this bot suit already and you have to, when you grip it, it's really cool. The way <laughs> I, it, it, I'm seeing myself just kind of do this with my hands now. That doesn't feel as cool. Of course, you have to be inside of the mech and kind of see it. Um, it's a great game. Um, here's like some of the reviews uh, from the meta page as well. Best VR game I've played. This game is scratched niche I've had for a long time. It's such a fun game. Controlling a giant robot and beating up everything around you is just so satisfying. It's one of the few VR games I've played that doesn't make me nauseous. Or I'd say nauseated. Um, even with the fast-paced fighting and moving around, 10 to 10, highly recommend. Uh, this game is so fire. I couldn't believe I was playing when I opened the game the first time because it was so good. It deserves 20 stars instead of 5. I have a recommendation. Please add multiplayer co-op skirmish mode or fighting someone in multiplayer kill box or something. It would be so cool. But without, even without that, it's my favorite game, 10 out of 10. And this is really the best game so far out of 2024. I know last year we had uh, Assassin's Creed Nexus and Asgard's Wrath, two both great games, both things I'm still playing. 
but you know this is great it's got got that gorilla tag feel to it but it's gorilla punching things and smashing things um it's really got a uh, heart pounding action uh you'll see in the playthrough that i'm doing here i actually got to the second chapter of the game it's much more difficult but play, uh, fighting the boss at the the first round was very intense i didn't know what to expect you start off fighting little roaches and dogs and little things that blow up and other bigger dogs and and uh things and every time it's a just a little bit different and the the randomness they come out sometimes the the things will open up on the sides the gear grinders and then you can pick them up and you can throw Throw them and your arms have different attachments it's a roguelike so uh with the my playthroughs i had one arm that you can put on that's like a uh a, like a hammer and you just you you nail them to the ground with it it's like a big nail and you just and then it throws a nail into and it, they're stuck to the ground now there's another one that's like an axe and you can chop them there's one that's like a grappling hook that shoots out and then you grab and then it pulls it back in and you can punch them or you can throw them into the grinder or just regular fingers you can grab them with and still punch them with or bigger things you can punch with and then all of these amps and things you can do to make those better so every time you play through you get to kind of choose your build do i I want a grappler somebody who i can grab and throw things or i just want to punch or you know how do i want to do this particular playthrough uh the game's really rough in a lot of other ways too uh this is not for your eight-year-old it's got the f word it's got the s word it's got words with letters i don't even want to tell you what the first letter of the word is because i'll get in trouble for just saying that <laughs> but that's what makes it fun it makes it genuine it feels uh, really good. All of the little cutscenes and the stories it tell does a good job of it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this is a game to pick up. Uh, I'll have the referral code at the end, and you can go pick it up on there. It's like thirty bucks right now. If you use the referral code, it's closer to twenty five. Uh, definitely worth it. I have a feeling they're going to be adding more and more things onto this. Maybe they'll add multiplayer. Maybe they'll add other kind of ways to play but this is the kind of stuff i really love seeing in vr uh, something that does something new in new ways and really makes you feel immersed and want to go back to it multiple different times and stuff like that and for such an indie developer it's great uh, i'd love to see what they could do with like a bigger team and do uh you know a bigger type of game blame an open world with this kind of bot that you can go and punch things and do all of that and uh you know kind of it's it's a new thing. I like it. Go check it out. Anyways, I would, I think, show a video of this game at the end of the episode, but I'm going to do that separately because there's too much censoring and bleeping. So if you want to see some of the gameplay in, in VR, uh, that'll be a separate video this time. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, thank you for watching episode number 15 of Virtual Reality in VR. We'll see you again on, on Meta TV. Now you can watch these on Meta TV. We'll see you on YouTube, DOVR, anywhere else. They let me up the load these videos and share them with you. I'll get them. Uh, put in the com you know, comments in the comments. I uh, every day go in there multiple times a day and I'm looking at wherever I can see comments and I'd love to see your feedback and, and talk to you about all of this fun VR stuff that's going on. Have a good one. Bye-bye.